Welcome to today's devotional as we are in the midst of this season of Advent. Thank you for joining us. We trust that these uh, scriptures that we read and talk about will be most inspiring to you as we await the coming of our Lord. Let's take a moment to listen to a piano duo this time from Genevieve and Jonathan. For a moment, can you imagine with me or remember what the best Christmas you ever had? What did it look like? Where were you? I'm sure a lot of memories could come up quickly of wonderful seasons we've enjoyed with family and loved ones. But now let's take a look at a world that is full of displaced people, the poorest of people driven from their homes. What might they imagine a very best Christmas would be like? Someone has said, vision is the ability to see things, not as they are, but as they could be. What kind of a Christmas might they imagine? This leads us to the passage this morning from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him the work of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall, ri- uh, shall live with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatting together, and a little child shall lead them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, enable these words spoken to put hope and confidence in our hearts as we pray together in your name. Amen. To imagine a world as it could be, to live in hope of a better day, for something that could be very different than what it is now. Imagine what their world would have been like What would those people in the poorest of conditions see as their future? Well, Isaiah of all the prophets has a vision that is grand. And in many many ways, Isaiah sees things not as they are, but as they could be and will be. 
The new world, as he proclaims, will come through the leadership of the family of Jesse. You might remember in 1 Samuel, when told to appoint a king for Israel, Samuel is led to the family of Jesse. And as is the tradition, he looked to Jesse's oldest son, thinking surely this is the Lord's anointed. But God wanted a deeper set of interviews. And so he said to Samuel, don't look on the appearance or the height of stature, for the Lord does not see us as mortal sees us. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Finally, the youngest son, David, came back from the sheepfold, and when he arrived, the Lord speaks to Samuel and says, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. This is the one whom God has chosen to fulfill his promises. The choice of David, the unexpected, the imperfect, the chosen. David, the youngest son of the tribe of Jesse, out of the family tree coming Jesus. Now let's forward two centuries later as King David's uh, uh, family tree begins to dissipate. And in that period of time, God speaks to the prophet Isaiah. He says, a shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse and a branch out of its roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding of counsel and might of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Isaiah is speaking about the family tree of Jesse, of which Jesus is the fruit. Now notice that this tree of Jesse is described as a stump. What that meant is that over the years, King David's uh, promising legacy began to dissipate. Further kings grew weaker and more corrupt, and almost certainly they thought it, it would die out. But even when that tree was cut off, there was life in it. And when many had thought the lineage of David would not lead to anything, God made a way, drawing through that stump that was left. Uh, once again, his wonderful work through Jesus Christ. Now listen to what Isaiah tells us about this leader First, he tells us that God's leader will come from that stump, the stump of the formerly great kingly family that had deteriorated over the, de the generations. Many of the line of kings from David had become portraits of failure. Imagine that Christmas when from Jesse's line would come a royal king, one born in the town of David, a most unlikely hero, born in a stable in poor circumstances, spending the first few years as a refugee himself with his family. And yet this is the leader that God has given to his people, to the world. This is the spirit of God poured upon this leader, immersed with character and with wisdom. Emmanuel, as John puts it, God with us. Think of God as dwelling in his tent among these people, putting up his tent and living among them and living among us. God in our pain and in our confusion and in our doubts, living among us. Isaiah also says that this is a leader who will create a new world. Can we imagine in our minds what a world like that would be? The wolf will live with the lamb, the calf, and the lion will lie together, and a child will lead them? That's the kind of world Isaiah imagines. An amazing picture. Creation restored, sustainable planet. That's what Isaiah sees in his vision. And isn't that what a lot of good people down through the ages long for? Talk about a time when there'll be justice, no need for greed, where there'll be fairness. We know that this is not the world we live in, a world of pandemics, of fighting, of sadness and tears, fractured lives and relationships. And yet the prophet says a better Christmas is coming, a new world brought about by the Messiah, the one from the root of Jesse, 
who will bring this world and put it right, wipe away tears and preserve his creation and have all of the knowledge of the Lord bestowed upon us. That's the vision of Isaiah. That's the Christmas he will give when he returns in all his glory and majesty. And though we labor through this world that never seems to end, we're called as believers to look forward in faith and hope when he will establish his reign and he will fill his presence and knowledge throughout the world. Christmas, as we all know, is soon upon us. And I hope that in spite of the restrictions of the pandemic, you will look forward to some wonderful things happening. I know I will. But while we're doing that, let us also pause to think about this prophet's promise that the work Jesus is doing in us now will someday come to full fruition in what I would call the best Christmas ever. <clears throat> My family used to write a Christmas letter and dad and mom would involve me in uh, the uh, writing along with my sister. And it was kind of a daunting task because what they wanted was in a short uh, five or six sentences telling about our future, what has shaped us and what we hope for. I don't know whether you still post or write a letter, but uh, if you don't or if you do, I would ask you to reflect on your own location in time and space during this complicated period of time. In spite of what's happening, let's ask ourselves, how, how could we be a part, a greater part of the greatest story of God's amazing love? How might we share the incredible news that we anticipate and celebrate during this Advent season? The news that God is ever drawing near in his son, the Messiah who will someday bring about the best Christmas ever. Let us pray. Lord, we of faith have a taste of what could be. We know that you have pitched your tents in us and through us, and we by faith put our trust in that time when Jesus will dwell fully in this world, when there will be a time when the prophet's vision is complete. May we be a people who are of hope, stay aware of the best Christmas yet to arrive, a new reality and a new world. Help us to live in that Christmas and in that hope and help us to serve in love in the light of that future. We believe you will transform the world and we trust in you completely. In the name of our Lord, amen.